Greetings and welcome to Yarnspirations. I'm Mary Beth Temple for Hooked for Life and in this video we're going to take a closer look at the basic crochet ribbed family hat. Now it's the family hat because it comes in a variety of sizes so hopefully you'll find one that fits all of the members of your family. Click on the link below to download the free pattern and find out more about the materials and while you're down there feel free to subscribe to the channel for fresh content weekly on knitting crocheting and other yarny stuff. Now this is a really interesting pattern. It's very simple to learn, but it gives us texture on both sides of the work. So let's get started and take a closer look at these stitches. Now I'm going to make the very smallest size. So I have changed 23. You of course will make the size that you wish to make. Uh, but it says leave a nice long tail about 24 inches. And the reason why is we can use that to seam up the hat later. And it's so much nicer that it's attached and you're not having to uh, add another piece of yarn and then that would give you more ends to weave in later. So it says half double crochet in third chain from hook. So one, two, three. There's my half double crochet. half double crochet in each of next 15 chains. Now you may notice that I am working in the back or the bump of the chain instead of the front or the V. And that's because I think it leaves a nicer edge. It's super easy to count and it makes sure that there is no pulling at the foundation chain because it is more elastic. So I'm going to keep going until I have completed those 15 half double crochet. And again, there's the front or the V where many of us were originally taught to stitch and I'm working in the back or the bump. Here are my half double crochets. And here's what I was talking about, about going in the back bump. You just get a neater edge and it mirrors the top. So that's how I like to do that. So I have, done all of my half double crochets and once again I'm making the smallest size. It's a single crochet in each of last five chain and turn. So that's one, two, three, four, Now we're going to turn the work and we're on the second row. Chain one, working in front loops only, single crochet in each of first five single crochet. So here's my front loop, there's my back loop. I'm gonna ignore that back loop and work in the front loop only. So that's one, see front loop only, two, front loop only, three, four, five. Now it says work half double crochet into horizontal bar created below stitch in previous row, bars below the loops normally worked, see diagram below, and repeat from asterisk to the end of the yarn. Uh, end of the row. So here are the two loops where I would normally work. Here is my horizontal bar. You see how it goes across? So there's one, two, where I would usually work, but instead we're going to go into this guy right here. So I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook from bottom to top through that bar, yarn over and pull it through, yarn over, pull through three. And we're going to do that across. Yarn over. Again, skip the two where you would normally work and go through that horizontal bar. Yarn 
Now, you'll note that this is a wrong side row. And the reason is, let's turn it around and see what's happening on the right side. Because we pushed those loops over and away from us, we're getting that really interesting texture. So that's why we do this stitch the way we do it. So we're going to go ahead and do that till the end of the row. And we're going to remember, because it was in the notes at the beginning, that in this pattern, the chain two does not count as a stitch. So do not stitch into that chain two. So here we are at the end of the second row. And then when we turn the work to do the third row, you can see all that texture. There's our loops from our front loop only singles and the uh, texture from working in the horizontal bar. So for the third row, we're going to chain two, one, two, half double crochet into horizontal bar created below stitch in previous row. Bar is below stitches normally worked. So we're doing that same thing. So we're going to repeat from the asterisk, in my case, 15 times more and then working in the front loops only single crochet in each of the last five single crochet. So once again, we're doing that uh, horizontal bar thing. So there's the two stitches where I would normally work. There's the horizontal bar beneath them. There's the two stitches where I would normally work. There's the horizontal bar beneath them. Remember that chain two does not count as a stitch. So when you want to count your stitches at the end of the row, so I'm going to keep going with my half doubles and I will meet you at the single crochets. There's the last of my half double crochets. And then we're going to single crochet front loop only in the last, in my case, five stitches. Your size might be different. So there they are. One, two, three, four, five. So front loop only, one, two, three, four, five. So now we have these textured stitches happening on both sides of the work, which is really cool. When you want to flip the brim up, you have uh, texture on both sides. So we're just going to repeat those two rows over and over the second and third row. So remember the second row is chain one, working in front loop only, work your single crochets, one, two, three, four, five, and then switching to those vertical bars, or pardon me, switching to those horizontal bars to the end, ignoring that chain two, because that chain two does not count as a stitch. And then on the alternate rows, you'll chain two and you'll turn and chain two, half double crochet in that horizontal bar of each one of these stitches and then single crochet in the front loops only of the single crochet. So this is super simple. At that point, so you're going to repeat those two rows until the hat at the widest point measures the number that it says on your pattern, whether that's 17, 18 or 19 inches or 43, 40, 45 and a half or 48 centimeters. You're going to end with a second row and fasten off. At that point, you're going to join the beginning and the end in a seam and you're going to use that nice long tail that we left when we started the piece. And you're going to gather the top of the hat securely. So the top of the hat, let's take a closer look at the picture. 
the top of the hat is the more narrow part and that's the part where you're going to gather that up and sew that securely so it does not come unraveled and then to make a pom-pom you're just going to wind your yarn around three or four fingers depending approximately 70 or 80 times remove from fingers and tie tightly in the center cut through each side of the loop so cut here and cut here trim to a smooth round shape approximately three or four inches or seven and a half or ten centimeters in diameter and sew that to the top of the hat now what i like to do when i tie the center of the pom-pom i leave like to leave a nice long tail there and use that to sew the pom-pom on because that makes it really super secure and the more you trim the closer you get to the center the more compact and round that pom-pom is going to look so thank you so very much for joining us here on your inspirations i'm mary beth temple for hooked for life please like this video and subscribe to the channel for fresh content weekly on knitting crocheting and other yarny stuff and we look forward to seeing you again here real soon bye bye